playing Fortnite. Gonna run a disk speed test. <laughs> Look at that. SSD. And this NVMe SSD is unlocks the potential to transfer data at up to 10 times faster than what that hard drive can do. Time to install this NVMe drive, which is PCIe Gen 3 by 2 and it'll have sustained reads at up to 1,000 megabytes per second and writes of around 800 megabytes per second. And so here it is out of the box and it also comes with a DIY heatsink which is here. So all I have to do is just peel and stick. It's got some thermal contact pads on this piece and it just sticks on over top of these chips which get apparently very hot. I do want to thank Canada Computers for providing me with this M.2 screw. The Acer laptop that I have has the standoff but it does not have the screw so I went to their tech uh, people and I asked them if they had an M.2 screw and they did have one and they just gave it to me for free So that's awesome. So that is the type of screw that you need to screw one of these drives in uh, Now I have everything I need to install it This is metal um, with some sticky thermal compounds And that should lower temps by as much as 10 degrees Celsius. So that's a nice extra bonus that that is included. Let me get the laptop reopened and we'll install this. Here's the laptop open. Uh, sorry guys, I'm shooting at night so it is a bit more shadowy than before, but I'm gonna install the SSD right here. And so first thing I wanna do is just make sure that I've got all my static electricity gone. I'm just touching metal because uh, I'm not running an ESD strap. And now you want to flip this over and it'll go in at an angle just like installing RAM. It goes in at an angle, you feel it seat in, so slip it in at a 45 degree angle and then you just screw it down. That's why you need the screw because without the screw you'd have to, it would be really sketchy without the screw. You'd have to figure something out but that's why you need the screw and that's just a friction uh, fit. There is no clamp or anything. You get this screwed down. That's it. Let's boot it up and see if the BIOS sees it. All right, here we go. I'm gonna power it on and press and hold F2 and that should get me into the BIOS. Yep. Your main information screen, it actually comes up right away in that we have an ADATA SX6000 and there's the old hard drive. So perfect, it sees it as well as uh, up in the security and the boot order. Uh, we now have the SX6000 as the first boot device. A physical install is complete. Now all the rest of it is software. I need to clone the OS off the old drive onto the new one, and then that will make it super fast. All right, now that we're in Windows, probably the next thing to do is just check to see that Windows sees the drive. So I'm going to right click and I'm gonna to go to disk management. Uh, and yes, it's telling me that I need to initialize my new disk. Disk one needs to be initialized as GUID partition. You must initialize a disk before a logical disk manager can assess it. We will do that. Disk here, unallocated, unformatted, 476.81. This is the NVMe drive. This is the Acer hard drive with the boot EFI uh, and a recovery partition of one gigabyte. What we're gonna do is clone to this and you do need software for that. So I gotta go download some. I haven't done my research on it yet. I have to go find some software to install. All right, so this is with the AOMI backup software. So let's see how this works. It says that I should be able to just go clone and disk clone, clone. Yeah, we wanna clone one hard drive to another. And we wanna clone disk one to disk two. Okay, so it's gonna do a disk one clone from the source 931 to the 476. The line partition to optimize for SSD. Sure, a clone and fingers crossed, starting to clone. And this is while Windows is running. So that's interesting. We'll see if it was able to successfully copy all files while Windows is running. It's been working for a while and now it's actually working on cloning the C drive and you can see that it's at 20% and it's going fairly quick once it's gotten started. All right, finally done. Finally got it to boot off of the NVMe SSD. Check this out. It's completely off right now. Power button, 
We're going to boot up. Once it gets past the Acer splash screen, it'll be in Windows in about one or two seconds. It's quite impressive. Boom. <laughs> Love that. That's a cold boot, too. That's not a hybrid startup. That's a cold boot off of NVMe. I'm quite impressed with that. I did have trouble getting that to work, though. Um, after I cloned the drive, the drive cloning software went very fast, but for some reason it did not work for booting off the drive. So I had to set the uh, boot BSD settings um, to enable it as a boot drive. Look up Windows boot BSD uh, as well as there's some tricks and results for, yeah, BCD boot. Anyway, sorry, it's late. I'm tired, but that's probably what you're looking for. BCD boot problem. So there's my drives, my new 476 gigabyte super fast drive which now has the boot and page file and stuff but all of those things were not showing up before until i was able to successfully get booted into it and so the only thing that worked i did a lot of googling i was been working on this for hours it's almost two o'clock in the morning right now and what i did was i went into windows settings and there's an option in here going to update and security recovery advanced startup and then once you get into advanced startup, you hit restart now, and it will throw you into this really neat menu that, I, that I'm not familiar with, but this menu where you can choose some different options. So you can choose to boot off a different device as well as uh, this one here, continue exit and continue to boot from Windows 10 from volume seven. Now before that was a different volume, so that's how I was able to eventually get it to boot off the SSD. I'm not sure why. Uh, it wouldn't just take pick it up based on my UEFI boot settings. I do have the SSD set before the hard drive, but this was just something that worked for me. I'm just going to hit turn off my PC so I don't change my boot order before the Windows Boot Manager, but for some reason it was still booting off that old hard drive for quite some time. Now it works, and you better boot off the NVMe. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, we're good. I can't hear the hard drive ticking, so. Now, let me just show you a raw crystal disk mark once the system gets up and running and stabilized for a minute. Just want to show you here that running on C drive, which is my NVMe. I'm just going to hit a one gigabyte test, a single pass, and we should get a read speed of over 1000 megabytes per second, and eventually a read speed of over 800 megabytes per second. At least that, yep, there we go, 1047 megabytes per second. So that is why I wanted to get NVMe, is because that is almost twice as fast as what you could get out of, out of the best serial ata3 drive that's possible so that is amazing pcie x2 lane with that to the right 829 yeah so sweet i'm just going to stop that now i was just thinking that you guys are thinking that i clickbaited you with the 10 times how to make your computer 10 times faster so i'm going to do a speed test on the old hard drive that's in here and I just want to show you the speeds that we'll get off the old hard drive. It should literally be a 10 times improvement in speeds. Yeah, look at that. Read speed of 76 megabytes per second. And the new drive gets a read speed of 1,040 megabytes per second. A nice SD card nowadays is faster than the hard drive that's in this thing. 54.9 megabytes per second right and we got 800 and something before on the nvme well worth the time to put in an ssd it is much later in the night um but we have success check it out mvme is installed playing fortnite gonna run a disc speed test while running fortnite <laughs> look at that 965 megabytes per second uh, and I ran a test when I wasn't gaming at the same time and it got 1050 so 100 megabyte per second drop but that's because we are currently playing a game right now and this is why I wanted to put MVME in because that is going faster than what SATA 3 can do. SATA 3 tops out at 600 megabits per second maximum 
and this is doubling that, almost doubling it. So those are the read speeds. Write speeds are going to be a little bit slower, but uh, still good. Last time I did a test just on its own, write speed was 800 megabytes per second. This is the i5-7200U with the Intel Integrated Graphics HD 620. There's the read speed, 782. Right on. All right, guys, if this was helpful to you, hit that like button. If you're new around here, hit subscribe. And thank you for watching.